how do you find content and put it in a place where people can rediscover the genre yeah. of movies? Because actually, right. look at Netflix. Like, great if you want to put, if you want to serialize. I mean, really, that's a great place for, for what you're doing because, you know, they're always pushing the envelope and willing to look broader at serialization. But if you look at their TV versus film business, they built a TV business at the expense of film. There's right. very little great film. Yeah. It's like, where do, you, where do you find these movies anymore? Um, well, I mean, it's interesting because you know, when, I, when Entourage was out, I used to write lots of jokes about the movie star on Entourage doing TV 15 years ago was considered, you know, your career was over if you were a movie yeah. star doing TV. And now TV has basically become the movies. They yeah. give people a million dollars an episode. You know, you talked about Friends. It took 10 years for Friends, the most successful sitcom of all time, to get actors a million dollars an episode. Now they pay Jennifer Aniston a million dollars an episode to start out on the morning show. So the TV business has become movies. Essentially, put stars in it and throw up stuff and see what people think about it. So that's also kind of, to me, it kills me as someone who I love independence and even Entourage, when we did it, there were no stars in it. They became stars, but yeah. what I loved about it is nobody knew who they were. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't starting a show with Mark Wahlberg playing a movie star. It was starting yeah. a show with someone who people didn't know. So um, I don't know what the future holds. And there's so many avenues of content that to get your people's eyes on it is, is very challenging. So, um, yeah. and the movie business, even for me as someone who's, as I said, I've made a couple of movies and I've made films. I like the, the TV business better. I like the idea of being able to make a show essentially shoot it like a movie, but have this longer format to, to create characters in. So it, I don't know, movie business is trouble, you know? It, 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 it's, you know, I, I, well, I love both formats. The problem is that in the old world of film, you have, to book a, you have to book a time to watch it, right? Whether it's with your partner or your friends or whatever. You yeah. don't, it's like, you know, in today's world where most people live in fish bowls, right? Our attention spans are like this, they're gone, right? We're, yeah. we're sifting content so quickly. Uh, I don't know if we're sifting it as quick as Quibi, uh, you know, this, that, that new venture, but, yeah. but, but what I do know is that one and a half, two hour movies, are, are, are an appointment, whereas TV, yeah. we're happy to just sip it 10, 15 minutes, watch it on the train or whatever. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll consume it in any format we want um, or on, on any platform. So I, it, it, it's, um, it, it's but difficult. It's also, it, it's also weird, though, because people will, will sit down to watch five seasons of a show before they think about a movie. Something about the idea of a movie seems more challenging than, oh, I'm going to start... The Handmaid's Tale and be stuck for thirty hours. I, it's it's weird. And I, I, by the way, I'm the same way. I'm much more I'm much more apt to start a new television series than a new movie. So I, I, that's usually what I'm watching now. You know, I have to really hear a movie is unbelievably good before I'm jumping into it right now. I, you know, I I, I hear. What, what's interesting is a bit like when books were written in long long form chapters, and then all of a sudden. You know the fictional, the non-fictional writers would would split the chapters really small, right? Yeah. And, and I think this idea that you can get in and get out, and the, you know whether it's you know every episode leaves you with a cliffhanger or gives you that next step, and then there's the recap. It just feels like it flows easier. But the renaissance yeah. of TV is insane. The yeah. the money that's going into it. You know now this crossover. It's almost like if you have a great Game of Thrones or a great comedy series, you may get and go and do a movie on it as well. Yeah. And I, and I just hope because um you know a lover of movies as well in a big way that, um, that movies don't become the, the, the poor relation, almost the, you know, the EPK of TV. It'd be kind of scary to think of that. I know it, it is, but with obviously two things are happening. And I said, you know, again, when Entourage started, it was very important to me to shoot it like a movie. You know, HBO thought I was some, you know, uh, who the hell do I think I am that I wanted to shoot in widescreen, but I wanted to film it like a movie. And I said in 10 years, people are going to have in their house essentially movie theaters, you know? Yeah, yeah. So now with technology, I don't know, because there's a lot of people, and, you know, when we get to our age, and, and I am like you, I go to the movies by myself at least twice a month, you know? Yeah. But most, most of my friends of my age don't go to movies at all. And the younger generation pretty much only goes to movies when it's, you know, a... a you know, a, a superhero vehicle or a giant action film. So it is scary to me. And, and, and then you see the models of, of Netflix that they can spend 
$100 million on the Irishman and not care that it grossed $2,000 or whatever it did at the box office. It's, right. it's, uh, and, and there's still is, there's nothing, especially comedy, there's nothing like sitting in a movie theater with a group of people and laughing when, when oh, you're all enjoying it. So that is sure. a horrible thing if that disappears, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it is. It's a, that we got to chart that, uh, you know, we got to you know, sell these or chart these waters because, you know, the, the format of the medium is under, under threat. Like I really believe it's truly under threat. Yep, and the, actually the lens of movies, if you think about the, uh, the identification of, of genre, it sits in all those interesting stories in the independent world, because if the independent world is, we take our kids to a family or a franchise or a sci-fi or Star Wars or whatever it is, we're rarely seeing, I don't know, even The Departed, which you know, is still pretty mainstream if you like crime or whatever. Yeah. But we're, not, we're not seeing all of the, the stories that come out in that format. And yeah. so the question is, you gotta, fix, you, gotta, you gotta fix the appetite for people wanting to watch the format. And I think streaming's one thing for sure, is it's the it's the consumer's choice, right? People yeah. want it on demand. They can watch it anywhere. And um, the the problem is that TV is just to eloquently put by you. It's just more sticky.